On this week's episode of The Fizz, we are missing Channy football, but no fear. Me and Ice Cold Brulu break down the Lions, the Red Wings, everything that has happened in the past week. Larkin getting knocked out, Perron getting suspended, and everything in between. Of course, we have to talk about Tommy DeVito and the New York Giants, along with Jersey Shore, amongst other things. We also have another snack time of foreign snacks, and then as always, we close with over under but before we get into all of that i have to tell you about our amazing michigan made sponsor vosa vosa is an rtd vodka beverage that comes in two types one of them is their vodka waters which has no carbonation it is lightly flavored very smooth great drink five percent alcohol by volume and then what i have in front of me the highline highline has a little more flavoring to it uh, and it has some carbonation if you are looking for that. And this one's also 7% alcohol by volume. I love both of them. You guys should try them both this holiday season. They're Michigan made, they support local, and you should do the same. They recently have been picked up by Kate Upton, who is a part owner. Uh, so they are gaining steam, and you guys will want to get on the train as they take off. So give Michigan made Vosa a try this holiday season. They have a bunch of different flavors. My personal favorite is the vodka water lemon. Vosa, enjoy the finer things. But now, let's get into the fizz. Hello and welcome to episode 132 of The Fizz. Thank you all for joining us. It is Wednesday, December 13th, about 8.45 p.m. We have lost Chandler for this episode, but that doesn't matter. We have ice cold brew Lou with us. How are we doing, Lou? Doing good, baby. Good to rock it out on this Wednesday. Channy down in Florida, soaking up a couple rays doing some other things that we can't talk about on camera. Hello. But uh, yeah, let's I, rock it out. Me and you, buddy. I kind of forgot he was in Florida. For some reason, I thought he was in Denver. I feel like whenever he's gone, he's in Denver. Yeah, he's a Denver guy. He's a mountain guy, west guy. Whatever. You know, that guy. He's that guy. <laughs> so yeah, he's down in Florida, slacking off. We're here working. Lou's grinding his ass off. Uh, lighting authority, been hanging lights all winter. Yep. Some people getting them up late in the year here. Yeah, yeah, we're rounding off the year uh, today pretty much. Maybe one or one or two more at the end of the week, but uh, pretty much finishing it off this week. So it's been a, been a good season, though. Yeah, you know, so if you uh, want to get your lights up here in the next few days, Give Lighting Authority a call, look them up online, uh, or keep them in mind for next year. Yep. But I know I hate hanging lights, so if you do too, give them a call. Give them a call. That's the authority. That's the goddamn authority. You can never have too much authority. No, That's you what can't. I always say. No, and you got to respect. People respect authority. That's right, baby. Yeah. Cartman said it best. He did. He did. Respect my authority. He did back in the day. So, uh, yeah, man, holiday season, late December, hard to believe. You know, the year's wrapping up. You know, I feel like that's kind of the uh, conversations everyone's having nowadays. But, I, you know, I really believe it. I can't believe we're at the end of this year. Crazy, dude. Have you been getting into uh, any of the Christmas party extravaganzas yet? Yeah, it's been it's been a little slow. Uh, kind of more of them are picking up in these next couple weeks. But uh, I've had a couple so far. How about you? Oh, I bled out this weekend, boys. It was uh, – Last weekend? It, or this past weekend, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This past I'm, I'm weekend. I'm so bad with like the last weekend, past weekend yeah. shit, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> you know me, I'm a wordsmith, so I do fumble <laughs> them from here to yeah, there. Yeah, cut you some flack. <laughs> so, but yeah, I had three already this past weekend, Sheesh. two on Saturday, a Sunday one for my girlfriend's work. Um, and I, I said, I was like, you know what? I'm not drinking again until we go to the Red Wings game tomorrow, mm -hmm. actually. Um, which was a complete lie. I, I failed the mission. I did have a beer after our beer league game last night. Oh, you got into it last. Okay. I did. Cause I, I handed you a beer right when you walked I in. Know, here I know. I forgot. I did have one after the game. I'm drinking another one right now. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny how that works. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that is just how it works. And I feel like this is the, uh, the time of year where it's just, it starts happening. Food, you, beer, yeah. alcohol. Yeah. You can't, you can't really control it. No. Um, and I was just thinking like, Earlier this, I mean, this whole week, honestly, I just, the, the, the motivation just kind of turns down. It's like, Bad. I'm trying to like, not let it happen. Yeah. But, um, 
I, dude, it just, it's, I, I try to tell myself, like, I think depression's an aggressive word. Yeah. I'm not, like, depressed. I just don't want to, like, do shit. No, I agree. I'm in the same boat, and, like, we've been cranking out the lights and shit. I'm like, dude, I just want to shut it down. Yeah. Like, I want to go on vacation. I'm ready to just relax, eat, <laughs> drink, all the above. Yeah. Circle D. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Circle D? A, B, C, D, D, all the oh, above. Oh, got it. D, all the above. Got it. Phil, so sometimes. Welcome you know, sometimes, to Scantron. Bring them sometimes back. Sometimes I think I got you figured out, man. And then I, you know, I trip up. Yep. No, yeah. I don't know. It's just like, I fucking, I'm such like a coward in the cold. It's not like a secret. I'm done fighting it now. Yeah. Like I'm always fucking cold. And when I'm cold, I want to do less. And you like, and golf. Yeah. I'm chilly. <laughs> I get these tiny little, little fingies. fingies. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm a soft-handed guy. I'm at the computer all day, and it just gets cold. And I, I just, I, I don't know, man. This week was just fully on. Like, I want to just shut down until like December, uh, January sixth. Yeah. Yes, watch nothing. Oh God. Um, but hey, I mean, we got good part at least sports wise. A lot of good stuff coming up. Yeah. Fucking absolute crunch time for the Lions right now. Uh, the holiday games for the Wings are always fun. Yep. Pistons are absolute trash, but um, we got like a pretty exciting football weekend. Your fantasy playoffs, yep. which is hard to – that's always the, the wildest one to me. It's just I miss, I miss like football for so long. You get so excited for fantasy, um, and then it's like all of a sudden here we are, like week 15 yep. in the playoffs. How many, uh, how many leagues are you in? Um, so I do, I do two. Okay. Uh, and I made, I made a vow to never do more than that. The last time I did three, I absolutely hated it. Yeah. And I'm actually debating, I'm the commissioner of both. Of, I'm like debating cutting yeah. the second tier league. Yeah. I almost want to just go down to one league. This has been the first year for me, like where I've been like, man, fantasy is just like, yeah, it's gone down. You know, it, it has gone down for me, but it's like, I've been part of you know, these three leagues, two of them really for like a, a really long period, the one that you and I are in, and yeah. then a one uh, with a bunch of our buddies from Michigan State that we're in. I do, and then I'm like stuck in a family league that we That's do tough. every year. So it's like, I'm not going to tell my uncles and cousins and shit like, fuck this $40 league. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, before you know it, you're, you know, I'm in the same three, four leagues every year. Yeah. Um, but Rough, rough fantasy year for me. I've, I'm in the playoffs in one, and then the family league, we actually do an extra week of regular season, so I need to it's win. It's just the top four make it? I think it's six. Oh. They do an extra week. So it goes to the end of the season. Yeah, which is like... That's brutal. Yes. So the championship's just pure chaos. Yes, where it's like you that's got guys like, sitting. You got like it teams. doesn't matter. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so w I got to bring that to the table this Christmas, actually. I mean, that's sure. like the dumbest... That's like the <laughs> fucking first rule is like you don't... Whatever. I mean, hey, it's I, I get it. You're working through no, yeah. yeah, no, I do understand. Like, you know this. You don't need to be lectured on it. So I'm grinding that one out. I'm in the playoffs in one of them, and then the other two. Dog shit. Yep. Yeah. So I, um, you know, I got our league. Uh, was in first place literally the entire year until the final day. Uh, lost the bye week uh, on the Tough. final day of the playoffs. Tough. Yeah, it fucking sucks. Um, I'm absolutely in roster paralysis right now. I don't know what to do. Just got no confidence. Everything's falling apart right at the worst time. So that one sucks. And then my other league, that one's been going on forever, like 2012, 2013. Uh, just like the juice was missing this year. Like we have the group chat, like not a lot of chatter. Yeah. Uh, you can kind of tell, like, it's just, I don't know. How are the trade wins? A lot of trades going or nothing? Nothing, yeah. dude. Like very, I think there was one trade, yep. you know, um, you can just kind of tell, I guess people get over the older. They start having kids. I don't know what it is. Less right. interested. There's so, just so much other shit too. You know, it's like, you got SGPs, you got daily fantasy, you got crazy <laughs> well, with all the gambling, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, it's like, fuck dude. I know. And it's hard to like care as much when it's when you can throw like the whole league buy-in on a sunday which we're doing easily. anyways yeah, <laughs> yeah like easy no question easy lions I'm, are winning yeah i'm like one or two games of the one o'clock yeah easily <laughs> like know? absolutely no question so, so you leg it out though you stick it out for the boys it's always fun and it, it's like chatter. ebbs and flows you know like some years are better than other others no reason to like abandon ship like you just gotta keep it keep it rolling and you know i think maybe you may be like early thirties, people having kids and stuff. It gets chaotic, but then like, you know, if you keep it around, it'll cool down in the future and maybe like you get really back into it. Yep. I don't know. No reason to throw it away, but I don't, but I don't want to do more than two. Right. Yeah. I agree. Cause then the math just gets, I mean, the one year I had three and I was doing the daily fantasies and gambling, like it was just a touchdown, like hurt and helped five different right. ways. And, and then I you got that. three guys on a buy. You got one guy that's on IR and it's like, fuck, and I got to like go into the free agent pool and yeah. pick up 
fucking P Ryan to backfill. <laughs> P Ryan. Fucking P Ryan's gain, always there. I got Gainwell, you know, in the yeah. flex. It's I love like, these fuck. names. I love naming these these names. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just yeah, it, it, it is how it is. It is how it goes. It goes how it is. It goes how she does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's up? Anything else outside of uh, outside of the uh, the fantasy world? The one thing I was kind of like putting, I put this on the sheet here is. So my wife just started watching Jersey Shore again, which okay. I I didn't really know was still going. No, I had no idea. Yeah. So I when you asked, you're like, wh- I, and I was like, did you watch it? And I remember us watching it at, at Michigan State. Oh, I was State. watching it like I was going to mass on Thursday nights before the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I remember like hating it because I just, I fucking hated reality TV. Um, but like that show was like so big. Those guys got, that was like the biggest show in America. Yes. Um, it was just so entertaining. And like, you knew a lot of it was like fake but a lot of it was like this is how these fucking guys act dude like, oh yeah this is how it is well and i feel like uh just from like the guys we know like east side italians and stuff yep. it was like that but it was like so amplified because it was fucking jersey shore yes for sure i mean like the original one when they first started the second season when they ran it back in jersey then when they went to miami was even good see the fact that you remember all this is like like because i remember all the guys getting together to watch it and me being there it'd be like like a pregame yes and i remember like being there but truly not giving a fuck about the show just because like yeah. I just thought it was so stupid, yeah. which it is, but it's entertaining. Very. So my wife like watches it now. And I mean, I have too. it's, it's all, it's on at the house, but like now they're all grown up and shit. Uh, and they just go on like these family vacations and it's like, they're, they're like doing nothing. Like they go to like Jimmy Buffett, Margarita. It's like, God damn it. And they're how all am just, I fucking watching dude, this? They're all <laughs> sitting around on their phone and like, they just like go to the strip club twice. Like. And like they take care of their kids in the morning. Yeah, like it's it's so slow and like there's nothing going on. They're still bleeding out the cash though. They're oh, they're still ab- bleeding out the cash. They're absolutely still bleeding out. <laughs> like they know exactly what they're doing, and they're like, "Hey, we just got to stick together and go to Margaritaville and these like shitty American resorts like three times a year, and we'll be we'll be just fine." We'll there's keep still that it cult in. following that's like fucking loves Snooky, J Wow. I like like them. Yeah, they're, they're likable people. Right. They've all like grown. The situation's up. made a complete 180 in his life, dude. And they do dog him for never paying taxes which is like very <laughs> yes, funny to right. me like i love how they just like always will say like why didn't you pay your taxes and i think it's very funny he didn't pay his taxes. i agree they did like a not like a date oh do you ever watch uh have you ever seen the show american greed it, it's yeah yeah that, yeah that guy's got that nuts voice yes um they did a whole one on the situation oh really yeah. i wouldn't mind watching that to be it's, honest with yeah, you. yeah it's pretty funny it's pretty funny. They make him out to seem like the worst guy in the world for not paying his taxes. That show was fucking hilarious, though, like when we were in college watching it for pregames and just watching them fucking go out and call these girls grenades. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I know, and, like, you kind of, like, it's wild to look at them then and see them now because obviously they've just made a ton of money and, like, right. they're, like, I mean, they don't look great. Snooki but you can was, tell- like, hideous <laughs> then, too. Like, hideous. And just, like, the styles and shit from, like, that era and, like, cell phones were like not everyone had a smartphone no. it was just it was like just such like a weird like gap in time between like right like before a, that a flip iPhone phone aired. and like an yes. I, yeah, everyone having a smartphone um but yeah I was kind of bringing up the Jersey Shore to kind of lead us into uh one of the hotter stories in the NFL right now uh oh yeah Tommy DeVito the cut lip man dude <laughs> He is young Spadini. (laughs) How is this guy real? And how does he play for Jersey of all teams? It's insane. This like come up story for him. And then like his family, they always show him like passing out food at the tailgates. And then the the absolute pinnacle, the agent. Yes, man. Fucking. Uh, What was his name? I had it up here. It's like still, it's not stiletto, but it's very close to that. Um, so Tommy DeVito, third string quarterback to start the year. Sorry, I'm just. He looking looks at like the size of Joe Pesci. He's like, dude, <laughs> little dude like, he, he's like jacked though. Yeah. He, Are you talking about the agent or, yes, or the yeah, agent, right? Yeah. Um, what's his name here? Oh, Sean, dude, it's Sean Stellato. Pinstripe suit, matching fedora for his appearance on Monday Night Football. Like to always me, always pretended to be on the phone. Yeah, like, dude, you're not <laughs> taking a call. No one's calling you. Uh, I mean, honestly, like good for this guy. 
he knew that what he had to do yes. in this situation uh, and what he needed to do was stand right by his client and wear this ridiculous ass The most outfit. Dago outfit you could pick yes. out of your closet. on Monday night football in New York. And then Wild. they won the fucking game on a comeback win. He had a fucking great day, too. He rushed for like 75, 80 yards, I want to say, and then had the game-winning drive, drove him down the field. Dude, so I only watched like the, the, the last drive there, and – he threw fucking three darts, and that was it. It was game over. Yeah. He he was awesome. The touchdown before, um, who did they play again? Fuck. Uh, Green Bay. Green Bay. Yeah, so yeah. Green Bay, before they, they scored that touchdown. Dude, he threw an absolute dime to Hodgins, I want to say mm -hmm. it was, in the end zone. On the that run. broken play? Yes, yeah, dude. Scramble. An absolute fucking dime. And then Green Bay comes back, scores, and then he drives them down the field and kicked that field goal to win it. Yeah, I mean, this guy's got to just be like, Macomb County's like hero. He he beats Green Bay to give the Lions breathing room in Shout the division. Out DeVito. Dude, I love this guy. And um the the other thing about him too with this agent, I think he's um I can't say his name. Who started at free safety for us? Like Alif Ayafratu. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. He's his agent. No way. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a Is real he even in the league. Who? Ayafrantu. I think or? he started at safety for us this week, didn't oh, he? Oh I don't know. I don't even remember. Did he not? I thought I, I can't. I can never say his fucking. I just name. remember watching uh fucking Kirby or Jacobs get fucking Jerry Jacobs get burned on every fucking route. That's yeah, the only did. thing I remember. We did see that. I feed to Melifont. Dude, I can't say this guy's name. And this is a Detroit Lion. And we covered <laughs> the Lions. And I. Oh no. I, yeah, no, it's bad. It's bad. But he he's his agent. Okay. He's his agent. Um, and uh, so like one thing I was thinking though is like. It's hard to believe the guy's real, this agent and this whole DeVito thing. It's like, is the NFL just going like full WWE on us? Are they slowly like bleeding in the WWE and just like building these storylines? I'll tell you what, it's better than seeing Taylor Swift on every fucking commercial <laughs> break. I'd rather see the agent throwing up the hands, baby. Well, to be honest, that plays the Taylor Swift thing, I think is, you know, I've always said it's big conspiracy. So I think it play is. Play into my script. Right? Play into my script. <laughs> the NFL breakdown. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, well, I guess we're on NFL. Do you want to just do NFL right now? Yeah, Let's yeah. Do some NFL. Let's go NFL. Let's talk about the Lions. So, little Saturday action this week. Yeah, love that. Three yeah. games too. Yeah, spreading out the schedule a little bit. Uh, who's the first one? Vikings, Bengals at one, and then Steelers, Colts at four thirty, and your Detroit Lions hosting the Denver Broncos at eight fifteen. Yeah, kind of. Um, not that great of games, no. to be honest. Until the, I mean, the Lions Broncos, I think, will be a, a great game. Um, but Vikings Bengals could be sneaky. Yeah, you're right. You know, no, you're right. Uh, a lot of wild cards there. Yeah, it's, it's actually fucking crazy. So the Vikings have lost their starting quarterback. The Bengals have lost their starting quarterback. Are the Steelers still without Pickett? They are. Uh, Trubisky's still playing. I want to say. Dude, so of the six teams playing, those first two games are all with their backup quarterbacks. Minshew, yeah, take over. Minshew should be the starter, though. Yeah, I know 100%. you're a Minshew guy. Huge Minshew guy. Yeah. So, Lions playing Broncos uh, here Saturday night. Uh, unfortunately, I probably won't be able to do a tailgate video just because they flexed it to the Saturday. Got some family stuff to take care of. The boys potentially will be down here. It's all big TBD. We're going to see what happens. Um, but if you don't see the tailgate video for Saturday night, uh, I do apologize that's uh, you know that's just that's how she goes sometimes around the holidays. Uh, Lions, Broncos coming up. Lions have lost two of their last three. Lost to Green Bay on Thanksgiving. Uh, beat uh, who they beat in between? Why am I blanking? They beat the Saints in between. They did, and then lost to the Bears in in my opinion outside of the Ravens, the ugliest loss of the year. Definitely. Uh, and I don't know about you. I wrote about it in the Champagne Report this week, but I'm officially hitting Detroit Lions panic button. Yeah. I'm, I'm panicking. I mean, I don't know if I'm panicking, but like we were talking Super Bowl NFC champions, you know, not too long ago. I'm happy if we win one playoff game after what we've been seeing the last three or four weeks. Yeah. So I guess let me, let me make, let me clarify a little bit. So there's a, there's a really good graph out on the internet right now that literally lays out exactly what happens if the Lions win or lose any combination of their last four games. If they lose out, they will finish the season nine and eight. They will have a zero percent chance of clin clinching the division, but they have a sixty-two percent chance of making the playoffs. Getting in the so, wild. So game. that's the okay. shittiest scenario we could think of. So as far as like making the playoffs, I am not. That's not the panic level. Right. 
It's just like playing in losing those level. four games yeah. and then losing the first round of the playoffs. Yep. Which I, you know, I've said it throughout this whole show. We've ever done it. Like SOL is not just their shitty. It's how creatively they can break your heart. And this would be truly the newest way we've ever had our heart shattered. And yes. that's where I am terrified. If we don't win the NFC North, I am fucking, gutted. Yeah, I'm gutted. I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. Realistically, thousand foot view, host the Broncos this weekend, travel to Minnesota, travel to Dallas, and then, I'm sorry, we're at Minnesota first, and then the last game of the year, we host the Vikings. What do you think are, what do you give us in those four games? Where are we at with that? All right, so um, I'm nervous about this Denver game. Okay. I think it's going to be dicey, but I, I'm going to say that the offense comes back with a vengeance. The defense is still going to stink. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think we win this one like some ridiculous ass score, 33-29. Okay. So I'm going to say the line is Lions minus four. Yep. I think it hits it right on the dot. Um, it's going to be spooky. We're going to say like that's not going to be good enough, yada, yada. Uh, we split with Minnesota. I think maybe we lose the game at Minnesota, but we win the last one of the year or vice versa. I think we split with Minnesota, and I, I hate to say it, man. I think Dallas is going to fucking – beat the shit out of us yeah no i the I, way we look right now there's no way we're hanging with dallas dallas looks like one of the best teams in the nfc right what do now. they look like hands down no question what do they look like tell me dallas yeah they look like a, a possible fucking Super jug. Bowl champion honestly a they do they look jugging out dude jug. they they do look like a jug right now smoke the eagles like beat the doors off the eagles yeah that game really wasn't that close at all zero close. you know um, but with the last four games, I do think we get it done against Denver. I mean, we've played three shitty games, even though we've won them, one of them realistically in a row, we're back home night game. Ford field's going to be fucking through the roof, rocket buzzing, Rusty, if this game was at mile high, I think forget we're, about we're it. Talking we're talking a whole different. You know we're how scared a whole different game. You know how scared I am a mile high. I do. Spooky it's stuff. A scary happens. spot. It's very dude. scary, dude. It's a very scary spot. Um, so I think that we do get it done against Denver. I think we are going to cover too. I, I got the Lions winning this game by seven, thirty-one to whatever minus seven of thirty-one is. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-four. <Yeah. laughs> Um, I like, I do like them winning by a touchdown that game. I think that they beat Minnesota both times. And I think we get curb stomped at fucking Dallas. And that's what I, I would be very happy with that. Maybe not a curb stomping at Dallas. Yeah. Um, and he, it's even hard for me to say that we split with Minnesota cause it's hard to imagine us losing to them, but it was also hard for me to imagine them losing to green Bay and losing to the bears. Now I think bears and green Bay have like a better trajectory at this point than Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> you, you like that pronunciation, Mike? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> couple of Osas. A couple of Osas before this one. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I just It's crazy to me how this schedule looked like a cakewalk at the end, and now it's looking very tough. Denver has won six of seven. Um, they're putting up 24-plus points in their last five, six games. Yep. And I just – I'm looking for that silver lining and it used to be the offense. And in the last few weeks, it just hasn't been there. And no. I'm, and I'm getting real, I'm just nervous about this team. And I don't know what exactly is like falling apart, uh, but it seems like everything. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that a couple big issues are one, the O line has not been healthy at mm -hmm. all Two, the pass rush has been terrible beyond terrible there's there's zero pressure and three like our, our secondary really hasn't been that great and I, I mentioned them earlier but jacobs i swear to god i never seen somebody get beat so many times fourth and 13 against chicago not only do we go one-on-one -on -one with their best receiver dj moore but we go off sides that play what the fuck are you doing how do you go off sides on fourth and 13 you have no safety help over the top it, like i don't understand what fucking we're doing on, on our defensive scheme in that point. And that play, like, to me was almost like what's wrong with the team. Because, right. like, the Lions are one of the least penalized teams in the league. Big discipline team. They're pretty smart with game management. They squeeze as much talent as you can. Like, to jump on that play and not only to jump, but then also give up the bomb to Moore right. was just like – That was a we, we're like We're, like, broken at our – our like foundation, right? Cause and like I, we haven't done it, given up a play like that. I feel like in a, in a long time. 
hundred percent. And and another thing that I read this week was Sue's agent reached out to the Lions and was like wanted to see if there was any interest in him coming there. And they came out and said like the Lions were basically like, no, we're good. We're not I know, interested. I saw that. Don't understand it. Like, and then we don't dress. Uh, Bruce Irvin, who had a sack the week before. Like I don't, I don't get what the scheme is. I'm pretty confused too. Like I, I don't understand because. Um, not saying Bruce Irvin is fucking some All Pro fucking player, but Jesus, dude, the guy had a good week last week, and then we don't activate him to play. We're shooing Sue away like he's nothing. Like Aleem McNeil's out. Made no moves to the den- Houston's still out. Yeah, Hutchinson has has gone decline in the last four or five weeks. You can't like he hasn't done as much as he, his motor's still there, but the the plays aren't there. He's no. not making the plays. No, and I feel like sometimes like our show gets a little hesitant to like even rip on Hutch because they think it's like MSU bias, right. Or Michigan, whatever you want to say, Michigan. Dude, MSU if he's bias. fucking killing it, I'll suck his dick. Yes, like, absolutely. You know, like, and I, he was. Like, yes, dude. I have no and problem. At the beginning of the year, he was killing it. Yes, you know? but but right now it's like, dude, you haven't like. I, I, I've said this before, like, he made his – that sack versus the Bears. Right. And so, like, he's absolved for five games. But it's just like, dude, we need you to get home. And I don't know if he's getting double teamed and it's like the other guy – and I'm like, giving the benefit of the doubt. Like, sure. Not, it's not like the other guys are getting there either. But we have no pressure on the quarterback and we have no answer for a mobile quarterback. And we haven't had one all year. We didn't have one last year. Glenn has never figured out – how to handle a mobile quarterback. I read last week that Tracy Walker was going to be like up to handle uh, fields, but sure as shit, rushing rushing touchdown. Oh yeah. 50 yards in the first three drives. Yeah. Yeah. I did see some good news. Our boy Gardner Johnson looks like he might be, What's going on there, though? I don't know. He's, like, posting all this crazy stuff with, like, The masked man is back. Yeah. <laughs> right. But then, like, a couple weeks ago, he posted, like, December 20th. And then I was reading, like, literally tweets right next to each other. It was Gardner Johnson. People like Gardner Johnson has, has been cleared to return. And then right below it, it was, like, just to clarify, Gardner Johnson is not dressed or spotted at practice. So, like, I have Maybe no idea. Maybe he's high on the pain pills. He just <laughs> wants to get in the game. Dude. I mean, we need – a spark more than ever like yeah. him him coming out primetime saturday night would be like electric but i don't even know if he can like would that have to be announced already i have no idea we'll see i guess yeah i i realistically there's no way he's playing i feel like we would know by now you'd think right and i feel like yeah i don't know and it feels like the way like holmes and campbell manage things it wouldn't be something where like you know he's a game be time a decision yeah, yeah right they seem to like be pretty open with what they're doing yeah um, i agree but yeah it's just uh rusty makes me nervous man he's he's much better than fields and has all the same ability as fields and like it just kind of feels like peyton and russ kind of have like a little bit of their mojo back i'm yeah. not saying they're like i mean but those are like legendary those are hall of fame right. guys and sean payton knows how to run an offense they're hot as fuck dude sure. yeah they've been winning games they started like shit dude they're one game back from kansas city right now in, the, in their division that's insane you know after the shit start they got, like, you got to recognize it. And we'd be way more nervous, too, if the... Um, DeVito didn't fucking save our ass. Yeah, DeVito didn't Green save Green Bay's look great. And Minnesota's down to Nicky Mullins, right? right? Is yeah. Dobbs out? It's looking like he's questionable. Yeah, I mean, how many... Let's see what we got. What's going on with Dobbs? Was he benched or is he hurt? Vikings scored no points. Average, just blah, blah, blah. Dobbs was especially poor. Sounds like he got benched. You want to talk about an eye bleeder? Holy fuck. Yeah. Three nothing. Yeah, Vikings. that's insane. <laughs> Vikings against Raiders. Yeah, it wasn't like it was even bad weather or anything. No. It was just bad teams. Just two shit teams. So you got 31-24 this week. I got 33-29. Okay. Um, I'm spooked. I'm nervous, man. Speaking of other shit teams playing in uh, Detroit on Saturday... Mm. Your Michigan State Spartan basketball team take on the number six Baylor Bears. That is going to be an ass-to-mouth specialty. (laughs) I feel bad for anyone that bought a ticket to go watch that game. I can't – Michigan State loses to Nebraska at Nebraska by seven. It's just – that team, dude, is – this is one of the worst starts you could ever have as a pre-ranked – They were ranked top five, right? Number three? Number three. Number three. Number three preseason. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Like, so I obviously, like I said, haven't watched uh, outside of the first two games where they lost to James Madison and then I watched the Duke game. Yeah. Like, is it feels like now that we've lost to Wisconsin and Nebraska that it's beyond the point of like, oh, don't worry, like Izzo will have this team together come February. 
I mean, I don't know, man. This is the this is like we say that type of stuff all the time, and we have seen it where Izzo has turned down a really shitty start before. But I don't think there's ever been this much hype behind a Michigan State team to come out this flat and this shitty. And like, we're not losing games by a couple points, right? Like, we're not we're not keeping these games close. Like, we're getting smoked, smoked, and we're losing to fucking dog shit teams like Nebraska. I mean, that's unexcusable. That's unexcus. Yeah, it's unacceptable. It's just. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough year, man. I don't know what what they need to do, but they need to start hitting some threes. Their big men stink. I mean, I could go down the list here, but the team just fucking sucks right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm and and usually when we're you know now that I'm looking at this, the scores here and stuff, it's it's like uh, when they're bad and we say they're gonna get together like in February or March, it's it's usually like they only beat Nebraska by you know, four yes. and they needed like some free throws to close it out or whatever. No, they're just losing. Yes. Flat out the entire game too. And then they got absolutely fucking smoked by Wisconsin before that smoked like at home. Yeah. like dude. Tough year for Michigan state sports, man. I'll say that dude. It's, it's absolutely brutal. I saw some meme the other day that it was just like, um, it was like a Michigan state fan, like talking to Jesus. And he was like, why do you keep giving me your toughest <laughs> battles? And Jesus replied, holy shit, how are you still alive? <laughs> Honestly, fair question. I mean, yeah, we're like literally like clinging to uh, Jonathan Smith, like signing three stars out of out of yeah. Gay- Gaylord, Michigan. Yeah. That's where we're at. Literally. We have no legs on which to stand. Even though the hockey team, I heard, is ripping it. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't followed I they were at all. top 10, I want to say, right? I think they're like really ripping it. And did you see the... the um, the gruff jerseys? No. They put them on a hockey jersey. Oh, those were probably nasty. They're really sick. All white or like all white. green? Yeah. No, all oh, white. Oh, God. Yeah. That's they're, like a scoop jersey. That's something you oh, go buy. Oh, that's a hot one. That's yeah, a, yeah, something yeah. you go buy and hang up in the fucking man cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently they're uh, they're they're good. We got to check them out. I think they're coming to LCA on February 10th. Wow. Okay, let's go check that we out, go baby. scope them out. Yeah, I think so. Were, did you go to, like, MSU hockey games at, when we were at State? I, I really to, didn't. I went to, like, two or three of they them. They were dog shit when we were there. Yeah, they like, were bottom they were of bad. the CCHA. I went to, like, a Western Ontario game that was kind of like a preseason type game just because I wanted to go to Munn and, yeah. like, go to a couple games and check it out. Yeah. Um, but not, not a ton. My cousin is a big Michigan fan, so I took him to LCA when they played Michigan, Michigan State. I want to say this was probably, like, four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. So I try to peep a game every once in a while, stay in touch with it. That was a really good game too. We lost in overtime, but um, I don't, you know, I haven't been to a ton of games yeah, at fun. Yeah. I think they're remodeling it. Are they not? I thought they did. Or they did remodel it. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. We got to maybe take a trip up we gotta there. Peep. We got to Check them out. Peep. Yeah. yeah. I agree. We need something positive in the Michigan State vibes, dude. I know, man. It's bad. I just saw they hired like another president. Like what are we, like, I just, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing up there. It ain't right. No, it ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't let's right. talk about a good hockey team. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings. Um, I would probably say uh, pretty clearly the hottest team in Detroit, uh, even though they just had, like, their worst stretch of the year. But, like, they're still the most entertaining and exciting team right now, I would sure. say. Um, so since we last spoke, last time we talked, we said Red Wings red hot. They won six of seven. Kane was starting. Um, we were very excited. Crazy fucking week after all of that happened. Kane started with the Red Wings and, uh, it felt like kind of like a little monkey's paw. Like we wanted Kane. We were so excited for Kane. And then we promptly lost three. That was San Jose, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the that wild. game was fucking insane. Bonkers. Insane. Um, wings. So like in the last week, wings lost to San Jose in Kane's opener, uh, a game they were winning for nothing. And then five to four ended up losing six to five in overtime. Um, and Kane hit the post where he could have had the game winner. Damn. Um, game was one second away for, from setting the record for most shortest time period of six goals scored. If you can follow that. Yeah. So the fastest six goals have ever been scored in an NHL game is three minutes. The Wings did it in three minutes and one second. Holy hell. Yeah. Well, Fucking Wings San Jose Sharks. scored two shorthanded goals. Three pretty much. Yeah, because like, the other one, like, the penalty she, just ended. He was just stepping on the ice. Yeah. Technically, it was three. Or yeah. technically, it wasn't three, but it was pretty much three. Uh, that game was that game was absolutely bonkers. They lose that one to the Sharks. Um, Zadina made his return. 
Uh, I couldn't believe LCA, like, put him on the big screen and said, welcome back, Philip Zadina. Like, I just – you don't need to do that. He like, wasn't that guy. And he didn't want that. No. He, like, no one was going to welcome him excitedly. It he was, was like, get me the fuck out of here. He was the redheaded stepchild of the Iserman era. Like, yep. he was Holland's pick. No one liked him. He wasn't good here. He complained. He literally begged to leave, turned down a million dollars to go – play somewhere else i'm the shittiest team in the nhl arguably to start the year it was but yeah. they got, they've been hot lately yep. but um yeah so wings lose that game um and then and then saturday probably the most noteworthy game we're at home versus ottawa um probably our biggest rival in the nhl right now yeah uh, it seems like every game with them has like some bad, very chippy yeah bad blood um the other thing, too, about the games with Ottawa, they're never close, no matter who wins. Right. They haven't been. No. Sweden game, we got smoked. Oh, actually, that one, we, we came back. We were getting smoked. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was a close that one. That was a close no, one. No, good call. But beginning of the year, I guess I was thinking of more. We did, like, thump them, like, 5-1. Yep. Um, but they kind of, like, I don't want to say credit or anything, but they've, like, owned us. Like, in the past... 10 or so games i think they've like won you know they've won like eight of the last 10. yeah um but in that game larkin takes really weird hit from matthew joseph from behind i gets knocked unconscious it looks like and then his head gets hit again as he's going down uh did you watch that live i did yeah caner broke the ice for us tied it up mm -hmm. and then it was downhill from there but i did watch uh that sequence live where it was a it was just a madhouse in front of the net. Yeah. You know, and then you just saw Larkin laying like yeah. spread out like a chalk Dude, that was line scary. was drawn around his body. That scared me. Yeah. Like they had the stretcher out there and everything. And like you I didn't really see what happened when it for like when you were no. watching it live, no. you know, and like you just kind of saw like a tussle in front of the net, everyone like kind of banging elbows and punching and pushing, and then you just see him laying on the ice. It wasn't until you saw the slow-mo version where you were like what the fuck? Yeah. It was scary. Cause, cause like you said, it didn't look like anything crazy of a hockey play, but to just see someone's like lights go out like that. Um, we were like, I was watching it with, with my wife and she like screamed. I yeah. Mean, like, cause I was like, it was Whoa. scary. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Peron coming up and stepping up with the fucking cross check to his head. It wasn't, he didn't even hit the right guy. <laughs> no, he didn't. no, he absolutely like, he just jetted in to fucking clean somebody up. He, um, and he hit the guy like the most concerned about Larkin. Like he was, he was like, wait, the guy was waving the doctor over and Larkin just went and like whacked him in the head. Yeah. So here, here's my thoughts on that whole thing. Like one, I don't, I don't think he was like trying to be malicious and like knock him out in the head as I'm agree. talking about Joseph to Larkin. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a hit to the head where a guy ended up unconscious uh, and if you're going to suspend Perron for the reaction, six games, $150,000 worth of his salary uh, for coming after a guy and hitting him high in the head, there has to be some sort of repercussion for the guy who hit the first guy in the head. Right. I don't care if it was malicious, intentional, if that type of play doesn't knock people out. When you have, like, a dead body on the ground, especially the captain of the Detroit Red Wings, like – there has to be some repercussion, especially if you're going to suspend the retaliation for six games. I was going to say, and, and guys have gotten suspended for a lot, like doing a lot less for longer than what he, what they got. Yeah. For nothing, really. Mm -hmm. And Piranha a minor. And Piranha's a clean slate. He's never yeah. been suspended before in his career. And, and he's a they veteran. they threw the book at him. They threw the absolute book at him. By having a hearing at all, it's a minimum of five games. And then they tacked another game on top of it. So I saw the N the uh, NHLPA actually just put out a thing for Perron to. They're appealing it. Appeal it. Yeah. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, so they're appealing it. I'm, I'm curious to where it will land. Like, I am not defending that Perron shouldn't have been suspended. Sure. But to me, like, at bare bones, you have to su suspend Matthew for a game. One, at least one game. Right. And then I think maybe you give Perron three because there was intent to injure. He came up really high, and honestly, he went after the he went after the wrong fucking right. guy. What he did was wrong. He was just sticking up for his guy. I yeah, wrong is like a 
like a loose word because if no one would have done anything, I would have been like really, I would would have been furious. 100%. Yes, exactly. Wrong is, yeah, you get what I was trying to say. No, I know. Uh, He was intentionally trying to hurt someone. If that was my (laughs) guy, do do I love Perron for that? Fuck yeah, we already said it, right? You know, no question. And like, I mean, fucking buddy, think back to like, McCarty cold cock and Lemieux. Right. I mean, that was intent to injure, and he got like a five minute major, and it was just like, ah, the, <laughs> that was boy, a different time the boys too. are scuffling. <laughs> <Right>? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, just, uh, but it's it's crazy to me that uh, Matthew Joseph has this history with, with Larkin, too. A couple of years ago, runs him from behind on Tampa, and uh, Larkin punches him right in the face. You know, it's just kind of funny. I feel, I feel like Matthew Joseph isn't like, that looking guy. for this no i agree but he's just ended up like knocking larkin out like twice yep just like a wrong place wrong time type deal i feel like for him yeah but like fuck him and fuck the sends and fuck uh paul bizanet for yeah siding with them and this was fucking and he ain't letting it go dude i don't get it yeah i think and it's Whitney's weird he's been fucking dragging him too i know so i mean i just think it's weird how like adamant he was that joseph should get nothing yeah and to me it was like one game, I think, would have just, like, calmed, okay. calmed the whole situation down. Yes. And I just can't believe he didn't even have a hearing. Like, there's some repercussion for, for what he did. And it's nuts to me that George Peros is the NHL player safety guy. Like, the guy with the mustache who only, yes. only fought. He was a fucking wizard, though. Super smart. <laughs> was he? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was like a he was like an MIT or Harvard grad. Was he really? Yeah. You're making that up. No, I swear to God. He was like a super smart fucking dude. I didn't know that. Because yeah. he was kind of a goon, wasn't he? Very much so, yeah. That's wild. I didn't know that. Um, Wings dropped that game. Probably one of the ugliest games of the year. Like, everyone's all excited. It's a Saturday night versus the Sens. Kaner scores his first goal. Yeah. He tied the game up. It was 1-1 at the time. His so it was, was so electric. sick, yep. dude. But it was just like after that, it was yeah, it was straight noise. downhill. Um, you know, so we lose Larkin uh, to the IR. We lose Perron to the suspension. We lose JT Comfer, who's having a ripper of a year. Yes, Clem Costin, I think, spent. Oh, sorry, it's Clem. Believe it or not, it's oh Kleem. okay, news to me. Yeah, Clem. Um, he's been playing well and he's kind of like a presence out there he's kind of a nut job actually yeah uh he's on injured reserve so the wings are down like four regular you know everyday starters and they got to go into dallas tough task they lose six three that game's just forgettable rhymers in net um goaltending's been suspect lately absolutely Reimer, Huso, Loin, all of them, dude. Yeah, I, I think husband. Lion's been straight. Or Lion, I'm sorry, yeah. I think he's been straight. Like, the, the Ottawa game, I'm just throwing in the trash. But otherwise, I he think got he's the starter. That game. But, yeah, I agree. He had he was like he he was play the third period. four or five and one at home yes. before that game. Yeah. Um, But then, like, I was like. Huge game versus St. Louis. Yes. D- that Huge game was game. bonkers. Yeah. That game was almost as nuts as the Sharks game, but not quite. Um, 6-4. They win on the road. That was off a of back-to-back. They got in late that night. Not easy to win those ones. Uh, I know St. Louis is not that good of a team. I know they fired their coach after the game. Like, that's where they were at as a team. Mm-hmm. But Wings were losing that game three times. Yeah. And kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. Joey Valeno stepped up, had a great game. Jo- uh, Johnny Berger's two goals in two games since yep. his call-up. Um, Fabry's been unreal. I know Fabry. you've been dapping him up. Big but time. He's been sick, dude. Dude, I have so, I've never, like, of respect gained this year, Robbie Fabry. Three ACL tears. I thought the guy was toast. Playing in a birdcage. Sick. Yeah. A CCM birdcage. Did <laughs> right? you see no, that? Yes, they don't even make those school. anymore. No. Dude, he, that was awesome. He Daniel scored. Sprong has been playing unreal, too. Like, yeah. I love that guy, dude. He dude, is a he, fucking <laughs> jug. Yeah, I'll dude. say it. He snips. Yes, dude. He puts the puck in he the He has bed. a motor. Yeah. Uh, I think Raymond's been playing good. I feel like Wallman scores like every one one to three games, dude. Yeah, yeah it's he's, crazy. He, he puts pipes. Away. Team's fun. I mean, the team's gritty. Uh, tough stretch. They took three points of the last four games, which is not ideal. But just really shitty to lose those four guys. And then we happen to play our most games in that seven-game stretch, yeah. which is wild. Um, what do you think of what do you think of Kane so far? I mean, dude, I think that he's been fine. I don't think he's like trying to do too much by any means i mean he's i think he had an assist against st louis he scored against the senators 
I, I don't think it's a Kane problem that we're losing. Like, I don't oh, think, no. you know what I mean? Like, I don't think like him coming out there is like, we got to feed him. We got to get him the puck in the slot. Like he's, you know, I feel like he's like playing like the role player type position for us. And I think it's just one of those things. It's like, it just takes some time to gel together. We went through a little slippery slope here with some bad goaltending where, I, I mean, dude, I still love the guy. Like I'm still very fucking ecstatic about the scoop. For oh, him. I'm not saying any of that. Right. I just was curious, like what you th- thought of like i mean obviously we saw him play in chicago and he was younger you know but now we're watching him every day he's in yeah. a wheel jersey like for he's me he's still wheeling around dude, he puts the puck on the net yeah the one thing i've noticed which i absolutely fucking just love like he puts that puck towards the net and it's like when he gets it there is a sense of like good things can happen at any moment here yeah like i don't think he's as mobile yet i don't think he's like diving into loose pucks as much but like you said, like he's he still like major creates surgery. separation, yes. still makes guys fucking have to like look, get get after him when he's in the zone, and it makes other guys get open. And uh, I feel like he's just like a split second behind on some of these passes. Yep. And once he starts connecting on him, and once he starts finding like the net, like it's gonna be good. Yep. I've 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 high hopes. Absolutely. Yeah. The one thing I'm just worried about, I I really hope this Larkin thing is just like, you know, it doesn't. I hate to even say it, like turn into a Franzen thing where it's like, we think like he's good, but he's not cleared. And like, he can't be, you know, head injuries are just like, they're so indefinite. Yeah. Um, but we're Fingers going cross. Yeah. We're going tomorrow. We're going tomorrow against Carolina. That's going to be a fucking another good game, dude. Yeah. I can't wait. Um, and by the way, I'm still going to preach this to anybody listening out there. I'm telling you that bet I've been taking the wings bury first period overs and then if you parlay that with them plus one and a half or plus two and a half, you're either even money or you're on the plus side of things. It's been a great bet. Miss versus Dallas, hit versus St. Louis. It's a good bet. Said it. You've been saying it. Yeah. Well, About- miss, versus, miss versus Ottawa too. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> forget those two. Hit versus the Sharks. And- but overall, that bet is up on the year. Without a doubt. You know, so that's, and what, first period that's the most important thing. And first just so electric. Yes. We'll be hammering that tomorrow. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a little bit of action in on on that one. Hell yeah! Um, but the wingies, man. Should we bust into a little snacky? Yeah, I'm getting a little, I'm getting hungry. A little hungry. Yeah, me too. Yeah, let's. I think we could eat. All right. Well, it's snack time here at HQ. So if you listened last week, you know our buddy sent us this box of like foreign snacks. Last week we ate some I don't know South Korean, Japanese, Chinese. You tell me. No idea. They were like chocolate mushrooms. They were yeah, awesome. They were incredible. They weren't mushrooms at all. They just like no. were breadsticks with chocolate on them. Yes. And they looked awesome. They were incredible. And then we also had the um, prick pond fay lays. Yep. AKA it was like a barbecue skewer. It tasted yes. like it tastes yeah. like burnt. It tastes like flame. a char grilled. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we have a ton of stuff in this box behind me. I'm just gonna reach back, grab some shit. We'll eat it, rate it. Grab some paper. T- grab paper. Paper tea. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got today. All right, we'll reach back. We're going to do a blind grab as we do. Remember last week, like, you pulled up the mushroom box, and you're like, oh, no, 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 we don't want to do this. I did. It ended up being, like, the best snack maybe jug. we've ever had. It was so good. Right? I would, that, it just was like an ultimate movie snack. Yes. Let's see what we got. And we're digging in. Grabbing some packing. Bussin'. Bussin' snacks. Okay. Again, leading with... So, like, a lot of these, like... Oh, no, here we go. They're high chews. These are high chews. Okay. What are high chews? I feel like that was, like, a kid candy that we had. It almost okay. looks like a Mentos with, like, the filling. Yeah. Do you know Do you know what it is, Mike? Okay. No. All right, so we got the high chews here. Once again, it looks like... Um, like a lemony an something? A- an Asian... Okay. <laughs> ...dish... <laughs> Snack, if you will. Uh, I'm trying to like describe this for people. Are not you thinking like Southeast Asia or yeah, China? I couldn't, I couldn't even okay. give you. I mean, sure. it's it's an absolute. It says premium on it in English, but it looks like a high chew. But it ha- looks like it has a giant lemon or orange on it. Let's just open them up, see what we got here. But it's like it, lo- it feels like a candy. I guess is the best way to describe it. Okay, Let's see what we got. Looks like a lemony, sugary filled candy. Yeah, it does. It almost looks like a little dough ball. Yeah, looks like a little little dough ball. Little dough ball. Agree. They're kind of they're hard though. Seven point five out of ten on the hard scale. Okay. <laughs> I uh I thought these would be like softer. 
Are these yeah. like hard candies? Uh, no, they got a little. I've, they got a little flex. Oh, they in got them. some give to they them. They got a little flex in them. All right, let's try them out. Let's give them a go. Okay, they're like round yellow balls, covered in sugar dust. A little sour kick at the beginning, but not like very that juicy. Sour. Mm -hmm. Chewy in the middle, almost mm. like a laffy taffy, but not as chewy. Mm -hmm. It's like right in between gum and laffy taffy. Yeah, I think I like them. I think I do too. They taste like you remember lemon heads. Mm -hmm. It's like a chewy lemon head without like it's not as like intense. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The I think I like these too. When you bite into them, the um. The juice like really gushes out. Here, Mike. A little aggressive. You got that it. was a Brett Favre throw. You ready? Okay. Um, yeah, they taste like like soft lemon heads, but not as intense um, and very very juicy. I kind of like them. I do too. I fuck with them. So the snacks that are just in a complete other language seem to be pretty damn good. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's like a, it's like lemonade, Jolly Rancher. And I yeah. think there's probably people out there listening, like, yeah, dude, they're high chews. Like, you don't know what high chews are, because I feel like I've heard that name, but yeah. I don't ever get high chews. Um, what do you think? You want me to lead off? No, I think I got it. Okay, I'll give these a seven point four. I like these two. I'm definitely in the seven range. I'm gonna go a little bit higher though. I'm gonna go seven six. These are a good. These are a these nice are good. candy. They are good. I could see my like. This pack's too small. Yeah, I want more. Uh huh. I want to dump like five in my mouth at once. <laughs> yeah, once, yeah, yeah. These are good. Mm -hmm. Little lemony chews. Looks like lemon high chews. It doesn't even feel like that crazy of a like a no. thing. That's that's what makes them so good. Very subtle. Yeah. Nice lemon taste. Perfect chew. Yeah, good chew. It's not like sticking to your teeth, where like you're like yeah. fucking pulling your teeth out of your gums when you chew it. No, they're not tough to eat. I like them. You know that last ball. Sure, let's go round two. I got the one that you threw a second ago. Too. Mike about. dug that one up out of the <laughs> molding. <laughs> All right, so once again, from a country I don't know. I want to see if it says it in English anywhere on here. Quickly. Yeah, right. <laughs> I could easily see that. You know what's funny is like LaCroix, uh, that the fancy seltzer drink, or not seltzer, it's a... Uh, like a sparkling water. Yeah, yeah. Call them. Yeah. They're they're sparkling like made water. in Warren, Michigan. Really? Yeah, it's not like from I had France no idea. or anything like that. It's like Warren, Michigan. It's like basically Paris of the United States. Yeah. Uh, Paris of the Midwest. Uh. All right. I was from I'm from the Warren area. Yep. I did some time at 11 in Shaner. Oh, we're going to do these. Since we already did a candy. All right. So Ooh. These look good. These look pretty yeah, I'm American. Excited about these, these don't look foreign at all. No. Um, these are just Cheetos. It's got a Chester cat on it, but they're called Cheetos Paw Patties. Or Ooh, pâtés. I'm about to take that bag down. And they are pizza flavored. I mean, these have to be Those good. look incredible. Yeah, they literally do. Limited time only. I'm trying to see if they say where it came That's from. That's a perfect paw puff. If yeah. you've had the Cheetos puffs, imagine that shape in a paw. With pizza sprinkle on They're it. They're little paws, yeah. Yes. Um, Chester Cat's got like an Italian mustache. I feel like these are Canadian. Oh, these look great. These are DeVito puffs. Look at these things. <laughs> oh, these. my God. These look incredible. Yeah. They look so, like, very light. Yes. Yes, airy. Yes. All right. Yeah. They're good. They're Maybe almost too airy. Too airy. Too exactly airy. what I was thinking, dude. dude. All like, right. Not so, a ton of flavor. All right. So... So the paws, paw shapes, uh, it's not like filled in. Like in the middle of the paw, there's a hole, and then there's four little holes for his. I want more paw pizza fingers. Flavor. Yeah, they're really light. I need more. I need more. Yeah. yeah. Cool hmm. Man, that's kind of disappointing. No, I'm. I'm. I totally agree. They're Damn very. It. They're very underwhelming. I wonder if you pop like three in your mouth. If that's how you got to do it. Yeah. Maybe speed. you just gotta like full on. No, dude. Extremely airy, extremely light. Yep. It's like someone's yelling 
the word pizza three rooms away. <laughs> well said. That's what it feels like. Well said. Damn. You can tell these aren't from America. No. Because if they were American, They'd be they would be pounded have- <laughs> in fucking salt. <laughs> You'd like <laughs> seasoning. Yeah, it, would, it would come with like cheese to add to it yes. and like melt it in the microwave. Like if they had the, the Cheetos puffs flavoring on these, these would be fantastic. Yeah. It, it feels They're like super light. Dude, I want like it, like you said, like it to be a Cheetos puff, but like covered in this pizza yes. flavoring. They're so light. Pizza flavor with some possum crunch. Damn. I think these are Canadian because it's in English and it's in French. Mm. Canada, they don't know how to fucking snack over there. Mm -mm. I can assure you. I mean, they're good. They are. They're not bad. They're not good, though. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Like, I would never buy these. Yeah. Not over, like, if there was other options. No. Um... I mean, they're not. I'm gonna give it a. Mm, I'm gonna give it a six point seven. Okay, I'm gonna give it a five nine. Mm. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Dude. I think you really. I think you just had the highest. Hopes. Dude, I did. I swear to God, because I'm a big Cheetos like puff guy and, and like it's pizza. Yeah, and like pizza flavored stuff is usually pretty good. Like pizza flavored Pringles combos, easily. Just yeah. to name a f- few things, but like. Man, I was disappointed. Like it's not, it's not there at all. It's a, it's a five nine. Have you had combos recently? I have actually. Yeah. I uh, working these fucking Christmas lights, dude. I eat like absolute shit. I'm sucking down monsters combos. Gas station king, bro. <laughs> Beef jerky. <laughs> you name it. I eat my meals from Speedway. <laughs> <laughs> Nados. You ever go fucking four Nados in under thirty seconds? Because I have. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, I went back to the combo well the other day. I had the cheddars. Uh-huh. I, I was, like, bummed. I, like, I don't know. They didn't hit like they yeah. I thought they would. Like, I remember liking the pizzas more, so cheddar was like, okay, I'll just try this one. But, like, I just used to love them, and I remember, like, not even finishing the bag. I was like, these aren't good. No. You, you want some of these, Mike? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can I just come grab the bag? Sure. Yeah. Here. Go to Producer Mike. Mike needs some. Producer there. Mike's daiquiris. <laughs> Daiquiri Mike. Oh. All right. All right, cool. I feel like the same thing has kind of happened week to week. Like, I had low expectation for the Asian mushrooms and these Asian high chews, and they're, like, surprisingly good, and then – the Lay's and the Cheetos, I had high hopes, and they fell short. I agree. Same, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Not as good. Disappointing. Not as good. Um, what else we got on that list? We got to uh, bust through a little NFL, do our picks, and over-under. Let's do it. We already talked to Vito, so we love DeVito. We're we're eyeing DeVito. Where is DeVito playing this week? Because that game's gonna be on TV most likely. The Saints, I believe. Yeah, they are. They're heading down to NO. Uh nice travel game for giant fans. I'm sure the agent will be full fledged down there eating shucking oysters on the sideline. What? Sucking them down. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, we got absolute dog shit game tomorrow what happened to the chargers man that team is like fire gutless. the head coach gutless gutless fucking performance herbie's done for the year herbie's done keenan's out i mean that team's done raiders Ra- suck raiders are favored that that's why. that tells you where the chargers are right at. uh raiders are minus three who is quarterbacking the raiders o'connell O'Connell. It's O'Connell. I and believe, yes. he, dude, he looks like Derek Carr in his equipment. He wears number four. He looks, he has those like eyeshadow looking eyes. Wild to me. That's something you never want to hear. You never want to hear. You never want to hear. Uh, my dad recently called Derek Carr. He couldn't think of his name uh, the other day. And he just called him Vegas's reject. And I thought <laughs> it was like perfect. He's not wrong. No, it was funny. It was just, it was just listening to him to like stumble over like, I don't know who the fuck's. Who the fuck's New Orleans guy? They got fucking, uh, what's his name? What's his fucking name? Uh, fucking Vegas is reject. And I was like, yeah, okay, Derek Carr. Oh, That's cool who, stuff. Who's your eye bleeder of the week? There's, <laughs> well, a, there's a lot of bleeders out there. I mean, we're opening up the week with an eye bleeder. Yeah. Um, but we kind of already talked about that one. I mean, a couple honorable mentions. Obviously, Chargers at Raiders. Uh, f- 
Falcons Panthers. That's a bleeder. Is, it, is, an eye, is a big eye bleeder. But the Falcons are still in the race for the division, they aren't are, they? Like, but they suck, it? dude. I can't watch that team. Giants at Saints, eye bleeder. Yep. I mean, uh, Texans Titans. Any game the Titans are in is like usually an eye bleeder. Somehow. That was an insane comeback they had against Miami. How did they win that game? I have no idea. I turned it off. Yeah, because I was watching Devito for right. this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are the bleeders for sure. Games I'm looking forward to. Bills Cowboys. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a real good game. Eagles Seahawks will be sneaky as well. Dude, that's going to be an Monday awesome game. Night. I think. I yeah. think it's going to be an awesome game. Eagles just got embarrassed last week by Dallas. They're still the Eagles. NFC Kings until dethroned. Seahawks are fighting for their life yep. in in Seattle, which is one of the most hostile places to play. It's late. It's mid December. I think that game's going to fucking rock. I think it's going to be a good game. Um, so I'm, I'm actually probably most excited for that one. Uh, and then, uh, who Seattle's d- been exciting in all their primetime games too. that Dallas Seahawks game when they were in Jerry's world. Like that was the fucking shootout of shootouts. Yes. And who do the chiefs have this week? Uh, shit game, New England Patriots. That's right. I, I meant, I actually didn't mean to say the chiefs. I meant to say the bills. Okay. Oh, the Cowboys, bills, Cowboys, Bills Cowboys. Yeah, that's that's another game. Yeah. Marquee match of the week. Bills are starting to turn turn the tide. I I, I do like the Bills. Uh, I think the Bills are going to take down the boys in that one. Are you seeing them favored? Um, yes, I believe so. I actually had that marked down on mine. Bills minus two is what I saw. Yeah, okay. I see two two and a half. Yep. Um. All right. So what picks do you got? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. All right. I'll go, I'll lead it off with that one. I got. I, give me Buffalo at home. Dallas has been playing unreal. Buffalo's been playing some good ball, but I feel like they're starting to catch their stride. Give me the Bills minus two at home. I like it. Um, one line that looks a little fishy to me. Um, Packers coming off a loss. Everyone got all horny for the Packers, thought they were back, thought they were the real deal, and then Tommy DeVito slipped his Italian sausage into him late <laughs> on some Monday night um, and stopped the wagon. I feel like that loss just gutted them, kind of cut their momentum, uh, cut the legs out from under them. They come back at home off a short week now after playing Monday versus the Buccaneers. Buccaneers are still fighting for that division. They're sneaky. The line is three and a half. Not saying the Bucs are going to win that game, but I think that hook is just going to be too much. I think yep. it's going to be like a one- to three-point game. So give me the Buccaneers plus three-and-a-half in Lambeau. Okay, I like it. it I, I'm like too gutless and pussy to take this game, but this line <laughs> makes zero sense to me at all. Baltimore's giving only three to Jacksonville with – like, I don't understand that game. I'm, I'm shocked that Jacksonville is getting three only at home. People love Jacksonville. They think they're like, you know, I don't, a contender. I don't understand that one at all. Regardless, I'm staying away from that game. Give me the Washington Commanders traveling to L.A. to take on Maddie Stafford and the Rams. I like the Rams in this one. I think Washington's a deadbeat deleted team. Give me the Rams minus six and a half. I love deadbeat deleted. I think that's a good way to put it. Low. All right. You know what I'm going to do, though? I'm going to – I'm looking at this fishy line, and I'm just going to fucking take it, the one you just complained about. There's no reason the Ravens shouldn't beat the shit out of the Jags. Trevor Lawrence is banged up. The Jags are not looking that good. and the Defense Ra- stinks. And the Ravens are a Super Bowl contender. So I'm not going to overthink this one. I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to say the Ravens cover. I have it three and a half. I'll say the Ravens cover that three and a half at the Jaguars uh, this Sunday. So there's our picks. We, we got go. nothing from Channy. He's gutless. He hasn't sent us anything. He's down in Florida drinking daiquiris. Yeah. Sucking down my ties. Rubbing sunscreen on his pasty skin. <laughs> he is white as hell. He is a very, very <laughs> white man. There's no confusion what his skin color He'll come is. back red, never he, tan. He is blinding white. All right, let's pull up the over-under here. Jerry Bear got for us let's today. We got. Jerry asked if we were recording today. I said, of course. He says, LGRW, prayers up for Larkin. I totally agree. I hope that guy comes back. Um, all right, number one on the list. We'll lead with you, Lou, because you're Rocket. the only guy here with me. Sure. Number one. Well, producer Mike's here. I didn't mean it that way. Number one. <laughs> uh, crit... Oh, Christmas blow-ups. Christmas blow-ups. At first, I thought this was like family Oh, like the blow-up things out in the front lawn? Yeah. Dude, I'm fucking hanging lights day in and day out. I hate Christmas blow-ups. I think they're so fucking tacky looking. Like, they're just like the lazy 
Christmas ornament pe- that people put up on their lawn because they don't want to do the bushes. They don't want to do the roof line. They don't want to do the ridge line. They don't want to do any poles. They have no candy canes. They have no wreaths. You put up a fucking blow up doll. Get the fuck out of here. Overrated. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I think it's like ridiculous too. Like I get that Christmas lights are turned off during the day and they kind of sit on the bushes, but they're not like overwhelming. Like to see these deflated, like dead bodies, <laughs> like sitting on the ground um, f- for like half the day. I think that's what Chris Kringle wanted. Yeah, no, I don't think that's what he wanted at all. And like they have them for every holiday. Like we just got done with all the skeleton ones for Halloween yep. and now they're they're blowing them up for Christmas. And they're just getting like nuts. Yeah. Like there, there's literally a blow up of, of everything. Every time you go buy one, don't you just want to like rock them, sock them, robot them too? Yes. Like you just feel like you just want to start right hooking the shit out I of I got to imagine like, I don't know, because when we were in high school and shit, we used to, like, destroy snowmen. I mean, I'm not yeah. proud of it, but it's just, like, what you do at that age. Yeah. Like, you just go. I'll be honest. Like, a few years back, I did spear one drunk on the old. lawn. Let's go. I, was, I was either 29 or 30, but right on that, <laughs> <laughs> right on that beat, you were telling the I line. Goldberg speared the shit out of one of those at night. Yeah, I got to imagine they're just knifing these blow-ups now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a steak sticking up on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> funny story, actually, about trying to wipe out a, a snowman. There was like the biggest uh, snowman I'd ever seen on some lawn. And I was in eighth grade with with the boys just running around causing mischief. Sure. It was huge. I mean, they had to put like a ton of work into this thing. <laughs> and I saw this thing and I was like, I'm, I'm going to get this fucker. <laughs> and I ran at it like as hard as I could, lowered the shoulder and like hit it right in the midsection. Thought the thing was just going to blow was up. Was it solid? Solid <laughs> ice, man. Dude, I absolutely like wrecked myself blew out your shoulder yeah if i wasn't in eighth grade like if i did that now i'd be at like cr- all careers would be done including the podcast <laughs> picking you up from Crittenden. i'd be toast so yeah um and then two of the boys came over and uh we put six hands on its head and we knocked it the fuck okay. off <laughs> so you think you're fucking better than yeah, me no. you hurt my boy's shoulder <laughs> yeah christmas blow-ups overrated though i totally agree especially when you have like like seven or eight of them on the lawn it's yeah. just like what's the what no. are we going for here no terrible yeah. All right. Number two, dodgeball the game. Um, dude, dodgeball rocked. I loved dodgeball. When when we were able to play that in grade school or whatever, uh, it was so much fun. Uh, my dad used to coach our baseball teams growing up, and we'd always have the practice in the gym before you could go outside. Yeah. It was all cold and shit. Uh, and I'll never forget – just my dad being my dad, like he didn't have like dodgeballs. So he just like went in our garage and he grabbed like any ball that was out there. Soccer ball, volleyball. Straight up. <laughs> we had all of those. But what we also had, dude, was like those mini rubber like giveaway footballs. Oh, yeah, yeah. That like they fit in your palm, but like they were made of like Plastic. pure rubber. Like yeah. we had a Pepsi ball, a Mickey Mouse ball. Like, and. Uh, you could throw those a hundred miles an hour. And we had like, we were with the baseball team guys with good arms. And I just remember like varsity play doing this with like JV (laughs) and killing kids, like just absolutely gunning kids down with uh, like, think of the Peyton Manning skit where he's like throwing it at all the little kids. Um, And it was just like the hardest I ever laughed. And my dad was just like, Oh, (laughs) dodgeball. That's how you play it. (laughs) (laughs) Dodgeball underrated. Yeah, I'll have to follow suit. One of the best movies ever made from a comedy standpoint on top of it. But, like, they're still playing dodgeball in, like, the NFL All-Star game. Like, yeah. you still see dodgeball being played all the time. They actually tried to make – there probably is still a league of it, but, like, they tried to make an actual dodgeball league after that Lame. movie was made. Um, but just for the relevance of the game, like, it's a, it's an all-time game and everyone yeah. grew up playing it. Underrated. Yeah, and it's such like, – such, every part of it is, like – either peak happiness or embarrassment. Yes. Like you're either catching someone's ball, which rocks, knocking someone out, or you're just, you're taking it or someone's catching yours. And it's just, it's a great game. Great yeah. game. Men from the boys in that one. Number three, Pizzo, Advent calendars. Advent calendars. Wow. I've, I've seen, they've been getting a little like crazy with them recently. I've seen like a fishing Advent calendar. You open up a date, you get a new lure. Um, really? Yeah, I've seen like, like a bunch of exotic shit like that. I don't know if that's exotic, but is that what they like? Is that what we mean by advent calendars and shit? I, I'm just thinking of any calendar that Where you, you open, open up each up. date that's and you get like a of. chocolate, right? Okay, right. That's yeah. like the normal yes. thing. Yes. Um, I'll say they're I'll say they're underrated. Like pretty cool thing. If you're a kid, like you get a treat every day, something where you kind of get the countdown till Christmas. You get the adult ones. You get a fishing lure. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like fuck, dude. Underrated. <laughs> yeah. I um. 
I'll say underrated too. I like loved these as a kid. Yeah, they were awesome as a kid. Uh, Never and, waited the whole time though. I feel like I always opened up like four or five days in a row. You had to. <laughs> and now in the group chat, uh, you just get sent the booby advent calendar, <laughs> which actually hasn't made its way around this year. Which is <laughs> no, that's shocking. Yeah, I was. Everyone out like, there knows what I'm talking about. Every yes. guy has been sent the booby advent calendar each day. Uh, I don't know. And if you haven't, you need to get new friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one sent it this year, though. I, I don't, don't even know where it comes from. It I just do. always shows up in Dan the chat. Dan is the culprit every year. <laughs> <laughs> just calling names out. Yes. Yeah, um, underrated. I always think of uh, Bad Santa, too, when he like comes home wasted and shreds up the whole fucking advent calendar. Oh, yeah, that's and right. And then he tapes it back together, and he puts like a, like a Tylenol in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Very underrated Christmas movie. Yes. Uh, I love that the woman just keeps asking to make sandwiches. <laughs> to me, that was the funniest part. Uh, number four, uh, Elf on the Shelf. Uh, Two. I didn't grow up with Elf on the Shelf. I never did it. Uh, it's I've seen the videos like on TikTok and stuff, and it kind of seems funny how they like get the elf to do the most wild shit. Yeah, and the kids are very upset. Uh, it sounds like a fun little Christmas thing and people get pretty creative with it. I'm going to say underrated. I'm kind of a sucker for all that stuff. Uh, so I'll say underrated. I never did it either growing up as a kid. I, I, I feel like that was like, like we just missed that or it was a few years after our time of doing like all the Christmas stuff as a kid. Honestly, like, I think it's kind of like overrated. Like it, it's too much now where people are like taking it too far and beyond where it's like elf on a fucking shelf and like some like crazy setting and and it's too much, you know. I don't. I don't like it. It's overrated. Elf on a shelf. I saw a nuts one where, like, a woman like put a knife in the elf's hand, and then there was what like, a is, red I, I really, blender. What is it like? If, think, if you find the elf, you have to do something, or like, what do you do? I actually do you don't. Know? I just think the elf does mischievous shit all the time. And you just like look for him. Let's look it up, dude. Because I've seen one where like somebody tapes it to like their water dispenser in their fridge, so it looks like he's like pissing in your cup. Yeah. That's kind of, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. What is Elf on the Shelf and how does it work? Elf on the Shelf. Elf on the Shelf is a Christmas tradition started by Who Cares and Who Cares. Uh, the story goes that Santa's scout elves fly to the North Pole each night of December to report to Santa if the children have been behaving or misbehaving. The elves then fly back and hide in a new spot for the children to find them the next morning. Typically, the scout elves love to hide in sneaky spots around the house, and sometimes they like to stir up mischief the night before. All in all, this quirky tradition is what your family makes of it. Dedicated elf on the shelf parents scour Pinterest, blah, blah, blah. So blah, it's just blah. a fucking hide and seek with the elf every day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like it does mischievous shit. I'm going to say underrated. It seems yeah. kind of fun with the kids. Overrated, kid. I'll do stupid. It. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you all have your fucking opinions. We all have our opinions. Number five, swearing. Underrated. I don't, Underrated. I don't care Jerry, who's shut up. Yeah, Jerry, shut <laughs> Jerry, up. You Jerry, fucking, fucking moron. Bitch. Stupid, yeah. <laughs> Where else would I... How else would I describe things without S swearing? So fun. One of the funnest things to do. Yeah. Um, I always hated when people called it cursing. Mm -hmm. It's like you're not putting a curse. I would foul call it cussing. language. Yeah, foul language. I'll give you fucking foul language, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, right here. Yeah, how's that? You, you're still eating these yeah, Cheeto I'm puffs? still eating these air puffs. <laughs> <laughs> They're not doing shit. All right. Oh, yeah. That was episode, was it 132? Yep. Or 1? One? 132. 132. Episode 132. We're losing count here. We're getting up there. We're getting up there. Hey, thanks for listening, team. We appreciate you being here. Uh, if you're around on Saturday, you may see producer Mike and Lou lurking around. If I can get down there, I will. If not, either way, we got to bring the house, bring the noise. Need a Lions victory on Saturday. Need a Wings victory tomorrow. Let's keep it all rolling. Tell your friends about the podcast. Uh, and stay safe this holiday season. You know, we're going to keep recording, but, you know, just keep it safe. Everyone gets a little crazy around this time, you know, keep Uber. it safe. Make sure you're Ubering. Yeah, make a lot of Ubers. Make sure yeah, get Ubering. those Ubers going. Yep. Tis the season. Um, all right, guys, thanks for listening, uh, and we will see you next week. Peace. See you.